Okay, welcome everybody. So my name is Martha Alter Hines, and I am here today with a really beautiful, profound, special group of humans um, who I'm going to introduce to you in a minute. So this is a gathering that I was asked by the spirit world to hold several months ago, and it is now here. And um, I'm beyond honored to be part of this circle. So what this circle is, it's, it's being called an infinite soul wisdom council gathering. And the women here today include, in no particular order, uh, Anne Baring, Kelly Hunter, Julia Balaz, Maura McBratney, Don Brunke, Melanie Reinhardt, Heather Ensworth, and myself. So something that is, you know, pretty uh, immediately apparent when you look at this group of women is that they are each in their own ways um, astounding, <laughs> beautiful, powerful, um, wise. And I was asked to call together this group because these particular women do have these qualities. And I recognize that in them. I admire that in them. And yet what I, what I'm also being asked to say very clearly is that the point of this group is not to be looking up to these women. The point is that for me, they are a reflection of what we all are, what we each are. We all are this deep, wise, being of existence and we each are wisdom keepers of our world and of existence right so so as we move into joining the circle i would love to have you each feel like you are here like you are part of the circle with us regardless of your age whatever your age is whatever your gender happens to be whatever your your identity on any level, wherever you are in the whole world. Um, I would love to invite you to drop into your own being, your own heart, and to feel like you are here with us. So something that's really interesting about the way that, that, that the circle is being guided over, you know, this, the, in this, in this gathering, but also over time is that the intention, the vision that I've been given is that this circle will gather on a regular basis. And at each gathering, there will be a different member of the group who, who will be facilitating. So today, Heather happens to be the person who will be facilitating. But as part of the mirroring that we are each innately needed and we are in each innately wise and present on this planet for our own unique reasons um we're going to be having a different facilitator each time and so again i would love to before i hand it over to heather um i'd love to give you an opportunity to take a moment and just drop again into your own heart your own being your own wise soul and feel what the spirit world is showing me is feel that that you have a gem you are a gem maybe in your heart this gem that is the wise being that is you that is needed here on the planet that's here for a reason and you can imagine that gem if there are any hooks or anything holding it from being seen by you or felt by you, you can just let those hooks go. And then as we are in this time together, again, as it feels right for you, you can imagine that gem just being released. And then the light of the divine, the light of your own wisdom, your own heart coming through your being and being with that gem that is you and that gem joining with the gems of these beautiful women here today. So with that, Heather, thank you so much for doing the honor of facilitating this circle. 
Thank you, Martha. And it's an honor to be a part of this circle and to be a part of the larger circle of all of those who are gathering with us in this process. So I'm going to guide us into sacred space together. And then what we'll be sharing today is the theme of the lighthouse. How do we hold the energy of light and love in the storminess of these times? And as we share as a circle about how we each feel we can hold that energy of light and love and hope and peace and unity consciousness, we're drawing on that with all of those who are also participating with us remotely. And I truly believe as we create these kinds of healing circles together, we are affecting the energy of the collective consciousness and have the capacity to support the healing of the world. But let's open by calling in the medicine wheel. And I'm going to be calling in the energies of the directions and that ancient archetype of the medicine wheel that helps us move into sacred space together and i'll be calling it in through drawing in the energies of the earth and sky so let's close our eyes and begin to breathe in and out slowly and deeply and now let's honor together the energies of the medicine wheel by starting in the south and honoring the direction of the south and the element of air and honoring the stars of Aquarius that are guiding us into this new age. And we also honor the royal star Fumaholt that is helping us drink deeply of the living waters and wisdom and energy of the, the sign of Aquarius that is supporting us in moving into these new paradigms and moving into unity consciousness together. Let's draw in and give thanks to the energy of the South and now moving around the medicine wheel together, we come to the West and honor the energies of the West and the element water. And here we also honor the royal star Antares, the heart of the scorpion. Let us give thanks to the star and its guidance in helping us through times of transformation, helping us to trust the process of moving into the depths to be transformed and emerge in new ways in these profound times. Giving thanks to the energies of the West, we continue around the wheel and come to the North and here we honor the energies of the north and the element of fire. And we give thanks and honor the royal star Regulus, the heart of Leo, the lion, supporting us in living from our hearts with courage. Giving thanks to this direction, we continue around the wheel and come to the east. And here we honor the energies of this direction and the element of earth. And we honor the royal star Aldebaran, the eye of the bull of Taurus, guiding us in how to be embodied here and hold that integrity and healing energy of our spiritual selves in this incarnational form. We give thanks to the energies of the East and continue around the wheel to complete the circle in the South. And now together we step into the center of the medicine wheel. And here as we stand in the center, 
we honor our connection with the earth. We honor our connection with the sky. And that energy of the center within us, that place of stillness, that place of oneness. We attune to our hearts, that center chakra in our energy system, and allow our hearts to attune to the heartbeat of Mother Earth and to the heartbeat of the galactic center. And we feel our interconnectedness with each other and with the oneness of all that is. Giving thanks to the center, the energies of the directions, all our spirit guides and helpers, we now move into sacred space together. Blessed be. And now each of us speaking from our hearts to allow that energy of love and wisdom to flow through us. Let's each share our own sense of how we can be that energy of light in the world in this intense time of transformation, in these stormy times. And let's start with you, Melanie. Thanks, Heather. I've recently been inspired by the work of Chris Robertson, and his website is culture-crisis.net. And he speaks about the, the inevitability in a contextual sense of becoming, as it were, infected with what's going on in the collective and encourages us not to be afraid to go to that place of brokenness, of alarm, of destruction, and so forth. He points out how in the psychotherapeutic world that all those kind of experiences might be reduced to biographical events in the person. And he's just widening that whole perspective in an encouragement to fully embrace the horror of what is going on. And he offered a reminder of the story, an apocryphal story, apparently originally told uh, to C.G. Jung by Richard Wilhelm, who was the first English translator of the I Ching, on the back of which Jung's whole theory of synchronicity and all that developed. So in the story, which uh, happens in ancient China, although it could be anywhere. There is a village which has been experiencing a very, very severe drought. Rivers drying up, animals dying, people getting ill. And they hear about a man who's a rainmaker in a village some ways away. And so they send a message to this man, inviting him to please come and heal their situation. And so the rainmaker arrives and he asks to stay in a really small hut, which is not actually in the village, it's sort of between the village and the mountains. And just the image of betweenness is very meaningful to me. And so the rainmaker, that's all he wants. He wants to be in this little hut for three days. 
And um, obviously the villagers are a little puzzled. They expected, you know, big magic rituals and who knows what. So Rainmaker disappears into the hut. And three days later, the rains come. And then there's big jubilation and they're, you know, praising him and thanking him so much for bringing the rain. And and then he said, no, no, I, I didn't bring the rain. Um, I, when I, he said, when I came to your village, I could feel the imbalance that was here amongst all of you. And so I simply went into the hut and worked with the imbalance that I found in myself, which was both evoked by and also reflected to me what the imbalance was mm. within myself. And then he says, where I come from, it rains when it's supposed to rain and stops when it's supposed to stop. And I just felt so inspired by that because of our culture so intent on doing and fixing and, you know, um, getting very one-sided in all kinds of ways. But, but there, you know, that's, that's very much the path of the mystic or the introvert, etc. And is, you know, let's remember that these kind of invisible contributions are as important as more visibly obvious forms of activism and everyone has their place within our overall situation. So that, that's been on my mind all week and I thought I'd share it. Mm. And one more thing, which is more specifically Lighthouse. I heard a program on the radio where a composer was being interviewed and she described how she'd actually bought an old lighthouse <laughs> and set up house there, kind of renovated and so on and so forth. So she does all of her composing at the top of this lighthouse. <laughs> oh, I was green with envy <laughs> <laughs> to have such a space and riveted to the radio listening to this. And, in, and her music was beautiful, you know, because she sits there looking at this, the waves and the sea and the storms and the calm and everything. And then it occurred to me just today as I was thinking about our meeting, I, I thought, oh, well, um, each of us has a, an imaginary lighthouse equivalent inside our soul. And should we need to compose be beautiful music or write inspiring stuff or whatever it is that we do to participate in these times, well, hey, we've got our very own lighthouse. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you, Melanie. So, th thank you. Anne, could you Thanks share so much, Melanie, for bringing back that wonderful story, which is one of my favorites as well? I've been trying to balance myself in a very quiet place and have not succeeded very well today because there's been a lot to do with the material side of life, which I always feel is an interruption to the inner life. And I felt that there is, I've been trying to create a very powerful channel of communion with the higher spheres because there's something I have to do to speak next week. And it's a tremendous honor and privilege to be able to speak to the wider world. And I feel I have to prepare for it very carefully, but I've been interrupted by things like getting the stair lift to work, <laughs> getting an engineer to come who loses his way on the way, significant in itself, but arrives on in, and fixes the thing, which then goes wrong again. <laughs> so there is a funny side to this, but to keep this very powerful sense of a lighthouse within and going forth really from the other world into our hearts, is very important, I feel, at the moment, is something that we are all doing. And that beam of light coming into our hearts and then radiating out to the world, I really do feel is capable of giving some help 
to the terrible suffering that we are witnessing and enduring because we feel it as well. Um, we feel what other people are going through. We are horrified by the unimaginable tragedy of, of war and at the distance there doesn't seem to be much that we can do but I think we can act as the lighthouse. I really do feel that we've been called, all of us, to do this, to carry that role. And um, so I think that my focus in the next week will be on that and strengthening this great channel of communion between this world and the transcendent, which is really, there's no, no, distance really between them which is so difficult to understand because the other world is the ground of all that we are and is what unites us and if only that message could get out into the world that we are all one that we are all brothers and sisters that with all our differences and arguments and disagreements and battles we have forgotten that we are one life and that we're in touch with that life all the time, if only we can make space for it in the midst of our daily uh, needs and the things that need to be attended to. So I'm very privileged to be here and very proud to be chosen to be part of this group. And I'm very happy in the rest, in resting really in all of your presences. I feel that and in the presence of everybody who is listening as well, because everybody is included. We are all one. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you, Anne. Julia. Thank you, Heather. And thank you, Melanie and Anne, for those inspirational stories. You know, as Martha mentioned, invited us all to, to know ourselves as, as sacred, precious gems. I like that analogy as we remember our crystalline nature. We have crystal structures inside our being so we can act as a crystal. We can amplify emotion, energy to support others, especially when they're forgetting the peace and love and grounded wisdom amidst the difficult experiences that they're going through. So a practice that has been working really well for me in times when vocal expression of wisdom was not called for or ready to be received, what can work in a really powerful way. And it kind of ties in with the invisible power that Melanie was mentioning, that we can simply hold space for the person or others or the whole collective that is troubled mm -hmm. and do our best to hold the polar opposite emotion to their distress. So holding peace, holding love, holding feeling of safety, knowing that in that expression, especially if the person is near to us, immediately our own electromagnetic field expands really powerfully and they're able to unconsciously draw from it and receive from it and be healed and transmute their own challenges so much faster i've practiced this uh, multiple times with my daughter she's now 12 but especially when she was around the age of four or five when she was in distress i practiced this but i also brought in color an, an intention of bringing pink usually mostly with her at that age and saw her entire auric field being showered with beautiful pink and sparkly and rainbowy frequency and it was almost instant how she shifted her emotional and mental state. So it can work really well with children or with person of any age, really where you you just know that it's time for you to just listen to whatever they need to express, whether through emotions or through words. And while you're listening, oftentimes we are used to starting to think about what should we say to help them. But I find in situations more so lately that those words and that overload of information that we are all suffer from can come aside and really allowing our hearts and our 
innate ability to hold energetical information and frequency that can help shifting other people's suffering and challenges. So we can start practicing with our immediate environment, especially with the youngest one, even with pets, even with plants, and of course the earth, but then also trying to uh, nurture this ability to do that and then practicing when we witness something horrific in the news and then sending that frequency or anchoring that lighthouse frequency of peace and love and grounded wisdom for others to draw from it. And if you think about all the introverts that I believe for many of them, their purpose is to be these hidden gems. Metaphorically speaking, if you think about the amount of beautiful crystals hidden in earth, no one sees them, yet they are there and are powerful anchors for cosmic energies to work through them and use them as, as highways, as amplifiers, as transmuters whenever needed. So I often like to think about introverts, that they are like these hidden gems no one sees them yet. There's so much beautiful frequency that comes through them. And I'm sure, ladies, you've met many, and perhaps you yourselves are, are doing this type of work where suddenly you're called from inside your being to really activate that powerful crystal-like energy inside your being. And you see yourself, feel yourself becoming huge, really mighty, mighty in terms of how big your field is. And you feel something cosmic coming through into the earth to support her to support the collective. I believe, Martha, you've mentioned that, that spontaneously felt transmission coming through the Pleiades. And of course, the Pleiades were in alignment um, on that day. So there is, you know, we, we can do so much with that invisible communication through the power of intention of being the lighthouse for others, and then just watch the magic happen, how quickly we transmute things together. So I hope that serves you. Mm, beautiful. Thank you, Julia. Kelly. Mm. I've I've brought a my favorite, almost my favorite poem, uh poet is Rainer uh, Maria Rilke. And when I was thinking about coming together today and the lighthouse that that we have tuned into, um I remembered this poem. I live my life in widening circles that reach out across the world. I may not complete this last one, but I will give myself to it. I circle around God, around the primordial tower. I've been circling for thousands of years, and I still don't know. Am I a falcon? A storm? Or a great song. Mm -hmm. And that speaks so much to my experience these days in relation to my inner world and relation to the outer world, be it my immediate <laughs> outer world or the wider collective, which we are all a part of. There's no <laughs> escaping that. There's no denying that. There's no pulling out of that. We are, we're all engaged here with that collective consciousness and the intensity of the storm that we are in together in a kind of chaos moment, a turning point of the ages, maybe from the darkest point back to the light. And this is a storm. So how do we find shelter from that storm? We need at times when we're feeling especially overwhelmed or, you know, too much that we need an anchor inside. We need that that tower to be well grounded and founded, you know. And so um, for me, the anchor of spiritual practice has gotten more and more important. And I'm um I'm I'm devoting more time daily to that because it helps me center in a deeper place and it also drops deeper into the heart and the the womb chakra 
than the mind. It's it's like taking all the arguments and the mental gyrations, another storm, <laughs> in and bringing it to the the center and the deeper grounding that we need at this point in order to serve the earth and to embody more fully in the earth at this time. And then she comes up and supports us as she is evolving and changing and we can move and dance with the earth energy. But we need the embodiment, we need the grounding, we need the heart intelligence, and we need to just, you know, kind of turn off the mind. At times that means turning off the news. When things are disturbing us too much, coming back to that heart and and generating that love from there. So that's in in the way in which I I sort of feel like um, the great song coming through, as Rilke says, and and that falcon which flies between heaven and earth, and in those ever widening circles, and then it and then it spirals back to the tower for that sustenance, for that light, for that safety, for that grounding, for that uh, heart treasure, that heart space, that heart um, sanctuary. So that this inner and outer has been um, uh, a question for me, balancing my need for self-care and my need to be out there and do what I'm here to do and my level of comfort or discomfort with that varies. So I'm learning to kind of feel that out and maintain as much balance as I can and uh, enough time to center myself so I can be um, <laughs> sharing um, the, the, the fuller richness of the spiritual light when I come out, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> And I think we're all coming out. We're all coming out from this deep lockdown space. And the bridge has burned behind us. So how do we each come out? How are we each engaging with the world? What world are we engaging with? Or more specifically, what, what kind of world are we creating together at this you know, amazing time? And I wanted to share... Uh, one technique that I've been using for a really long time that I learned from Jim Self, who teaches Mastering Alchemy. And it has to do with roses, which are a very high vibration. You know, to me, roses are goddess energy, our love energy. And you take um, you take a rose that you imagine and you put it out in front of you about an arm's length in front of you. And you, the what color, the petals, how full are they open, um, the scent, you know, you just really, really engage that, that the reality of that rose. And then over here on that side and over here on this side and behind you, there are these four roses and you make a connection between them and then you connect them overhead and you connect them beneath you. So you're in this double pyramid, you're in this sacred geometry space shape that is quite clear and clarified. And as much as you need to, you bring those roses closer to you with any encounter with the outer world. So it's always being negotiated by this beauty and by this love vibration. And I, 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 my, my roses have made a whole circle around me now. <laughs> And so it's um it's this pyramid double pyramid shape within um a kind of egg shape. So when I remember, sometimes I forget and they fray a little bit. So I recreate them and and feel those roses around me yet again. And often I'm imagining one that I saw at Notre Dame Cathedral or Chartres Cathedral or some other beautiful place, some garden. And it helps me remember the, the, the finest interface, you know, let us say, between the inner and outer world and the safety of that tower and the light that shines from it. 
So may you smell all of your roses and the fragrance of them in every day. Mm, beautiful. Thank you, Kelly. Maura. So, um, Melanie, the story you told the Rainmaker is one of my favorites. And I remember hearing it years and years ago. And what it, it brought me a solace um, that being present, doing my own inner work, um, cultivating presence, and yet being engaged with what's around me would affect, as you were saying, Julia, the, the way in which we hold our energy makes a difference on all levels to everything around us all the time. So the importance of being able to cultivate that inner presence, the alignment of who and what we are, to know what that is, which takes a little bit of work here and there, and the ability to be able to to know that we are not apart from the fray, that being inside of the fray also is part of being here, to not pull ourselves up above where we don't feel mm -hmm. the pain as Anne talked about, or or because it's a way of not embodying and it's also a way of of not honoring that we're a part of what is going on, that we we have we have effect. And in our effect of being able to um, to really hold that precious center, being that light, being in alignment, it allows us to come back from the fray to get regenerated and reoriented so that we can spread that out to be able to give that to other people. And holding, holding love and heart-centeredness to me has always been the essential um, piece to that so i for me i i find ways to bring myself back to center to bring myself back in my body sometimes that means laying on the floor <laughs> and not mm -hmm. doing anything um because then i then i find a regeneration that happens and i find a way in which i can engage again yeah so that and that's another thing that happened a few years ago is is that kind of a an awareness and a fascination with what does it mean to cultivate presence? What does that mean for, for each individual? For, you know, I, I took it for myself. What does it mean for me to cultivate a presence so that when I'm in a room, someone else can feel that? If they can feel the heart centeredness, if they can feel the love, they can feel the joy I have at whatever's going on. How does that affect them? How does that change their experience? And you can see it. There's people that walk into a room and if they're in a in a in a place that's sad or depressed or angry, it can change the entire room. So how do we counterbalance that by being in ourselves, by being in our hearts? There's another prayer that I use daily from John O'Donohue that um, I'll just offer right now. And it's, may I live this day compassionate in heart, clear in word, gracious in awareness, courageous in thought, generous in love. And I feel that's been a very good centering prayer for me to remind me, what are we really here for? Who are we really here for? And that in that way become the light, the lighthouse, something that beams out to say, okay, we're here together, we're in this together, and through our expansion of heart-centeredness, we can shift and change the world. Thank you, Laura. Dawn. Rainmaker is roses, crystals, hidden crystals. I love how we are all emanating different aspects of the lighthouse. So I'd like to share with you a story, a personal story. Um, it's a lighthouse story of sorts. Um, this happened to me back in August, right before we had our first meeting, actually. And um, 
At that time, I, I unexpectedly uh, had an experience, a connection with an energetic collective that was very large, very beyond kind of what I had connected with before. And through the experience, an invitation was offered to work with them in some ways to do a project. And um, I knew it would be challenging. And I had other things going on, right? So I wasn't sure I totally wanted to, to go ahead with this. So in, in this is just how I am. I always say, let it simmer in consciousness for a little while. So I kind of put it on the back burner. And um, I thought maybe I'd have a dream. Maybe there'd be a sign from the universe, something would happen. The next day I was sitting on my back deck and I was relaxed. It was the afternoon. It was warm sunlight and a little wasp was buzzing around and it was a it was a nice encounter i wasn't afraid of it i wasn't anxious it landed on my sandal and my jeans i just felt it was being curious right so i said hello little wasp and i went back to my book and about a minute later i felt an incredible pain in my right elbow and i was like whoa i got stung i had never been stung by a wasp before and if you've never have it's really intense. So I had this sting and, um, you know, I treated it. And uh, after a little while, I, <clears throat> as is my nature, I wonder, what was that about? You know, I, I tend to have this thing of like, if something strange happens, I think if this was a dream, what would this mean? What What is it telling me? What is it speaking to? So I was thinking about different ideas about wasps, about, um, you know, the way that they're very, they're, they have a collective energy, about how wasps get to the point, huh? you know, <laughs> they're, they're, very, <laughs> they're very that way. I thought of the shamanic idea of sometimes when you're bitten by an animal or stung by an insect, you're taking in its medicine, huh? its teaching. And all of those things were really helpful to me, but I, I felt like I hadn't kind of gotten to the core of it. So um, the next day, I thought, I'm going to talk with the wasps. Uh, I'm an animal communicator. So this is something that was um, uh, natural for me. And over 20 years of doing this, you know, it usually takes me a minute or so, close my eyes, connect with that energetic signature of the animal. But this time when I closed my eyes, it was instantaneous. It was as if the wasp, let's call it the wasp collective or the wasp spirits were there kind of saying, what took you so long, you know? <laughs> and they proceeded to uh, uh, give me a transmission. And it was a little bit of a conversation. I don't really call it a channeling. I call it more of a, of a transmission or a conversation. And it was quite long. So I'm, I just like to read a, a few excerpts to you because I really think it speaks to where we are. So uh, the WASP Collective began, we come to wake you to your greater purpose. We wish to add our voice to the many incoming sharings like this on our planet. The WASP people are misunderstood and often hated or disliked by humans. We ignite your fear, fear of being stung, which is to say fear of being hurt or sharply intruded upon and causing chaos in your system. Our species may not be seen by humans as a harbinger of peace, yet we are a part of a larger group dedicated to expansion of spirit on planet Earth. We have stingers for a reason, for our life cycle, for our protection, for obtaining food, but we also use stingers to help the humans awaken. We are stirrers, stingers of prodding. We prod you to wake up to different ways of seeing, to shape your consciousness into larger ways of perceiving. We are pleased you did not hate us after being stung, but rather began to seek out the reasons for why and what a sting from a wasp might mean. You are on the correct path when you look at this shamanically, that a bite or sting from an animal is not a punishment, but rather an induction into our medicine. Part of you is now a wasp <laughs> because we have injected a piece of ourselves into you. Do you feel the wasp energy within you? And when they asked that, I really did. I felt a directive. I felt a kind of directing energy to be very clear, very coherent, very streamlined. And I, I conveyed that back to them. I said, is that part of your teaching? They said, yes, we direct, we streamline, we focus our intention in a way that humans are not fully familiar with. This is part of the medicine, both from living wasps as well as from the wasp collective. We are like the acupuncture needle, going in exactly where it is needed to bring about a change, maybe a slowing of energy, 
maybe a heightening of energy, maybe a shift of energy. This is part of the art to know where and when and how long to place the sting, sting or needle so as to shift energy for awakening. What we would like to share to your collective is this. We bring a very focused energy to planet Earth, as do many other insects. Insects are often thought of as others by humans. It is not difficult for you to feel close to some animals, such as mammals and sea creatures and birds, but most humans do not have an affection for insects. In that sense, we are perceived as other than you. You thought, you thought of the Pandora story, and this is true. While they're talking to me, I'm thinking about this childhood book I had of Pandora. And I love that book. And, and you know, Pan, well, I won't tell you the story, but <laughs> I saw the images of Pandora opening the box. So they say, you thought of that P Pandora story in which stinging and biting insects were released from a box by Pandora's curiosity. We find this tale heavy handed with judgment, but we say yes to Pandora. For by metaphorically bringing us into the world in this way, she awakens collective curiosity to know the others in a new way. Humanity is undergoing great change on many levels, physical, emotional, personal, collective, spiritual, energetic, and more. This is becoming clearer to many, and this sting was a wake-up call to resound our message that you and other humans are awakening and changing and evolving as you know, this is not always an easy ride. Understatement of the year, huh? <laughs> of the decade. <laughs> but please understand, you need agents of change like us, those that sting you into awakening, into noticing all aspects of your environment and earth and even of your own kind. Judgment is no longer a healthy option for humans. Just as you let go of your personal judgment about the sting, you are directed to open to a larger message of what a simple wasp sting might yield. We suggest there will be many such similar wasp stings for humanity in your very near future. We suggest you breathe deep and take a moment to reflect in larger ways of what these stings to awakening may signify. This is a period of not everything is as it seems. Relying on the surface image or on superficial idea or thought is no longer useful for you as a species. We wasps offer direction, clarity, focus on deeper harmonics, if you will, a, harmo a harmony of being that exists beneath the superficial. You do not need to be stung in order to understand this. As humans awaken to greater degrees, we will work with you as partners, not needing to speak so loudly, so stingingly. Do you have any questions? And I asked, I wonder if you would like to say something to humans at large who are open to this way of thinking. What, what advice would you like to share? And they continued, <clears throat> our message is one of continuing to deepen, to sink yourself into the larger awakened group consciousness that is already emanating on planet Earth. Some individuals are awakened and many more are opening to this by degrees. Many animals, elementals, plants, and sound beings are helping. So too have many humans stood up to help guide and open the way for others. There is a natural resonance that is being brought up to conscious awareness for humans. Many insects hum or offer sound emanations or vibrations that serve to help align and guide you to direct your energy in more creative and helpful ways for all. That is part of our directive to direct, to guide, to help focus awareness so that you may resonate with more helpful, creative, heart-filled energies in a way that allows for the expanded awareness of spirit on our planet. We leave you with that image of our planet emanating and expanding its resonance in such a way that all benefit, all awaken and all work together, a world in which we commune for the common good of all. We. <laughs> We apologize for our sting, and yet also hope you see how it was helpful to awaken you to us and to remind you of a larger energy that you might not have discovered on your own. We sing within you and are available to help you direct your focus and consciousness in your creative pursuits, and this we offer to all. With love, the Wasp Collective. <laughs> mm. uh, 
So that spoke to me, huh? On such a deep level and such a universal level, I think. And um, I, I don't want to add too much more. I just want to hold that there. Yeah. Thank you for listening. Mm, thank you, Dawn. Okay. Beautiful. Martha. Thank you. It's beautiful being with all of you. <laughs> what you're saying, Don, was the vibrations are just making me think of my cat purring, right? Like there's so many examples. <laughs> so beautiful. Um, so the thing that I'm being asked to share about is is the probably the most prominent theme I'm getting told in my praying lately. And it relates, of course, to so many of what you all are sharing, um, but gets very, very practical. <laughs> so this morning in my prayers, what I was shown is the I get taken outside of the time space continuum and it and they show me the time space continuum as a chrysalis or like a womb or something along those lines. And I was shown that womb of the time space continuum and how like lots and lots of us talk about it. Heather, you talk about this in your, your work all the time, but um, is that in that time space continuum, there's this ebb and this flow of, of remembering and knowing our oneness as source, our oneness as the all that is. And then there's an, an ebb and a flow of the forgetting of that. Right. So, so we're in this time where we've been in the forgetting and we're now in a moment where we're switching back into the remembering. So lots of us are aware of that and feel that. Um, and many of us, probably if you're watching this video, feel like we are here. We've chosen to be here on this planet in this exact moment because we are part of the change. Oh. So what the spirit world is saying to me, it, especially when I look at the astrology moving into 2024, the Jupiter Uranus conjunction coming and, you know, Chiron coming to the North node and lots of different aspects of the astrology um, is that they're, they're, they're saying that we have this opportunity and even an imperative. They're really asking us, any of us who feel called and right doing this to, um, to switch into that unity consciousness on a literal, energetic, physiological level, on a subatomic particle level. So, so to break that down a little bit, one way I, I've explained this um, is that I think we cognitively realize that duality and separation are an illusion, right? We, we, we know that, we agree with that. And for, for many of us, we have even had, or we maybe even regularly have experiences where we, like for me, I go into this, th the void, and I experience that reality that duality is an illusion and that oneness is the ultimate truth. Yet, I think for most of us, certainly for me, something that I haven't ever experienced in this lifetime is what it's like on a physiological energetic level hmm. come into a structure within our being that is based on an assumption of unity and oneness right so so what they say is when we came into this world when we were born our energy body our physical body was born into a world that holds reality as um mm. and with an underlying assumption that duality is real that separation is real that war you know is part of existence and um and violence is certainly present here on this planet at this moment right so our cells our subatomic particles have been have been constructed this to me feels very saturn and pisces like have been constructed based on this erroneous assumption of duality being true 
So now what they're saying is we're in a moment where if it feels right and if we choose to to do this, we have an opportunity now to to feel, to be held, to be guided into what it is to actually be to be structured in the energetic that is based in the truth of unity, the truth of oneness, and the truth of ourselves as the all that is, as one. Um, so I'm actually going to be holding a, a free gathering on December 21st, 2023, uh, that will be live and recorded where I'm going to, where I'm going to lead, you know, an entire hour and a half of do actually, how do you do that? <laughs> they want to channel and they want to, to actually guide people into, into that. And people are, anybody and everybody is very welcome to be there. But so in that, I'll, I'll actually go more deeply into this, but here, what they just wanted me to share is this basic idea of the reality that it it is possible and actually needed is it's like a it's a build a necessary building block a place to start on this energy level um that if we if we're here to be holding space for that reality of oneness which i feel like we are then um we certainly can know it we can maybe even feel it but then we need to be it on this pure energy body level and so they're here supporting us to do that and there we go <laughs> hmm. beautiful martha thank you well before i share i just want to say how moving it is to hear each of you and the light and wisdom and love coming through each of you it, it brings to mind for me a prism and how the sunlight moves through the prism and then manifests in all the colors of the rainbow. And that as we've been sharing with each other today, we each hold our unique experience of the color of the rainbow that, that comes through us. And that's not, not only those of us in this circle, but all of us who are listening and a part of this circle process today. And I've also just been moved to hear the way in which each of you are describing that dissolution of the sense of separation and how we are remembering more and more fully our oneness with each other and with all that is. And I'm also moved by hearing how so much of what's been shared today is also about how do we hold the wholeness of the light and the dark, of the joy and the sorrow, of the whole spectrum of what it means to be spiritual beings having this human experience on the earth. And I also love the theme of how, as we remember that interconnectedness and oneness, we're able to remember our capacity to commune with the energies of the earth and the energies of the sky, and the energies of cosmic consciousness. So what I would share is I'm in my own reflections on all of this is how profound it is that we are moving into the age of Aquarius, symbolized by the water bearer. And the water bearer is pouring those living waters to the earth, to sustain us, to awaken us, to heal us, to guide us. And I've been thinking so much about water, particularly influenced by Veda Austin's work, and her increasing discovery of the consciousness of water, and how water actually holds that energy and awareness of cosmic consciousness. And how when we are beings that are 70% water, our earth is 70% water, there is water within us, all around us, throughout the cosmos. It's such a reminder that we are all interconnected. And we are all a part of this sea 
of love and wisdom of the cosmos. And I truly feel that we're being guided to awaken, to heal, to remember that, so that we are able to move out of these paradigms of separation and power over and division and conflict into a time of love and peace, unity in the face of our diversity, and co-create a new world together. And I love also that as we've been sharing today, I too love that story, Melanie. That's That's been a story that's profoundly meaningful to me. And it so echoes that hermetic principle, as it is within us, so it is outside of us. As it is outside of us, so it is within us. As above, so below. Everything is interconnected. Everything is mirroring everything else. So as we heal, as we come into balance, as we hold that energy of love and light, we emanate it out to all those around us, and we emanate that out in the collective consciousness in a way, as Rupert Shelbert Sheldrake talks about, we're a part of this morphogenic field, and as we hold that energy of love and light and higher consciousness, we affect the whole collective and help support the healing and transformation of the world. So I'm deeply grateful to be a part of this circle and deeply grateful for the ways in which that energy of cosmic consciousness comes through each one of us. And I'm also profoundly moved in these times by my own increasing awareness of how we are not alone in this shift. <laughs> that our sense of separation is dissolving and in such profound synchronicities, the energies of the earth are supporting us in our own transformation as she is transforming. The energies of the sky and these transits that are just in guiding us in this dance of transformation into these new ways of being. It's extraordinary to realize that we are held and guided in these larger currents of cosmic consciousness that are coming to us through the stars, through the planets, through the energies of the earth. And we are in fact in this part of the galaxy right now where we're being infused with these cosmic energies and energies from the galactic center coming through our sun to transform every aspect of who we are. So the light is within us, it's all around us, we can open to it and then also be vehicles for allowing it to flow through us to all around us. So before we close our circle, let me just open it up to see if anyone else has anything that you feel moved to share to be a part of this process. Anne. Thank you. I wanted to just show you the book that I published in July, which is My Mother's Messages. And for Kelly, there's a most beautiful rose. And I'm so inspired by what you said, Kelly, because I will, I will do that right away as a practice. It's the most wonderful image to do. So as Heather's just said, we are helped, we are guided. We're surrounded by beings who are really transmitting their love to us and also their guidance, definitely. I feel it more so, particularly after being in this group. I feel strengthened and heartened because I was a bit low today, a bit tired, but I feel refreshed and greatly inspired. I love the story of the wasp. <laughs> and the rainmaker reminds me really of what the place of the meditative introvert is and to just embrace that. So thank you. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you, Anne. Anyone else? 
I just want to add to what Anne said that that the link to Anne's newest book is going to be with the description of this video. And and I want to name that when I was um, being guided, you know, into the energy of this circle, your mother Anne was so so present to me. Uh, okay. So I feel like, yeah, I feel like um, in some way maybe she's part of what we're doing. And for anybody who's not aware, the the book that Anne just showed is is the channeled writings of your mother, right? And yeah, she would love to have been in a group like this. Mm. Maybe she is. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well said, Melanie. Perhaps she is. Perhaps she is. Yes. <laughs> Actually, Martha or Heather, would you be so kind and share a little bit some of the key? astrological alignments of today which just demonstrate such a beautiful divine orchestration of how divine feminine is coming together at this time i thought it was just so amazing how we scheduled the date just to get our diaries together and then when we look at today's transit it's just you can't make it up how beautifully not just the planetary alignments but also the stars and even the black holes we have sun conjunct i'll just mention this one the great attractor so this whole weekend, I believe that transmits the frequency of including, uh, integrating all fragments, including all perspectives. So the whole conversation was in light of that too. Do you want to mention any of the sacred feminine alignments that you pointed out, Martha yeah. or Heather? Yeah. Go ahead, Martha, because you sent that out in an email to all of <laughs> yeah, us. Well, yeah, I mean, and, you know, many of you here could add to what i'm about to say but today as we're recording this the moon is conjunct the 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 south node which happens to be currently conjunct the star spica or spica and um spica or spica is part of the constellation of virgo who is associated with goddess energy in general and spica in my understanding but again many of you are much more expert at knowing these things than me but i definitely feel her as part of um bringing back the ancient wisdom of the divine feminine among other things and and i read um i think it was kaylin castell maybe who said that um so virgo is also often associated with the goddess estrella and and estrella energy um can be associated with the bringing together of the divine feminine elder wisdom which i found really interesting when i realized that spica happens to be conjunct the south node right now and happens to be con natally conjunct my nor north node <laughs> so here we are <laughs> um yeah my understanding is spica is a, a, a bright star and it marks where the um, the goddess is holding a sheaf of wheat or grain, the mm -hmm. seed, and the root of the cycle of nature, and it's her gift. Mm -hmm. Wow. So it's how you are of service to the collective. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. I also just one want to add that I think it's profound that, you know, Melanie, you were talking about the power of being in between the liminal times. Mm -hmm. And we're now at that final crescent moon before we move into the dark of the moon and the new moon on December 12th. We're mm -hmm. also in this here in the northern hemisphere in this time of darkness as we await the winter solstice and the return of the light. And we're also in these final degrees of Pluto and Capricorn the taking down of the systems of the past to move into the Aquarian age and Pluto will move into Aquarius as we move into January of 2024. So we're in this powerful liminal time, which is a time for transformation and healing. Well, Thank you all for being a part of this circle and all of those listening for being a part of this larger sacred circle together. And let's just close by honoring the energies of the directions, honoring the energies of the medicine wheel, giving thanks to 
the energies of the earth and sky, giving thanks to the energy of the center and the energies of our hearts and how our hearts are linked with each other's hearts, are linked with the hearts of all who are on this planet, are linked to the heart of Mother Earth and the heart of the cosmos. And we give thanks to all of the directions, their energies here on the earth and in the sky. And we give thanks to all of the galactic beings and our spirit guides and helpers who are holding us all in this profound time of change. To all we say thank you and blessed be. <laughs> so thank you all who are listening for being a part of this process with us and thank you to this circle thank you thank you everybody <laughs> <laughs>